What's up guys and we're back. We're back with the revised review on the FM SCAR 16S. Okay, a lot of you guys pretty much know where this thing's background is for. This thing was originally designed for special operations use. That's actually what the acronym SCAR stands for. It stands for special it's it stands for Special Operations Combat Assault Rifle. And uh Bottom line, this thing is a fantastic rifle. Uh, so far, I put about 6,500 rounds through it. It has performed superbly. Zero malfunctions out of this rifle, shooting everything that I can throw at it. From really, really shitty Lake City to pretty good training ammo in my mind, but Wolf also. That's what a lot of people complain about. And uh, pretty decent manufacturers like Federal, Remington, and um, PMC. But it ran it all, it didn't care about it all, and I got one inch to less than one inch shot groups out of this at 100 yards the entire time. So, um, we're, gonna go, we're gonna go over my slightly scripted uh, agenda here. And first things first, um, this is laughably light stock, okay? Um, What's really screwed up is that this thing is about three quarters of a pound lighter than a standard AR-15, which is light as hell. Okay, um, when you add ninja gear to it, it actually feels like a full-sized M16 as far as uh, weight is concerned. But that's bare bones, the M16 that is. So this thing is stupidly light, especially for how reliable and robust it is internally. It's very, very light. Okay, um, it does run standard AR-15 magazines. Now, I, I run a caveat by that because the mo one of the most popular magazines out there is the Magpul P mags. The only Magpul P mags that will run in this rifle out of the package are the E magazines and the latest generation of uh, P mags. Okay, uh, the standard. Uh, Gen 2 P magazines and the windowed P mags that are out right now um, actually cause problems that I'll illustrate a little bit later but they do cause problems and if you run them in your scar you're going to cause damage to your bolt uh, release and your bolt so stop if you are um, there are ways to modify it and get away with it but honestly the standard P mags fit so tight in this lower to start with that I wouldn't actually run them in my rifle mainly because they won't drop free you have to strip them out individually so you know it, it is what it is <coughs> and as light as it is it's surprisingly durable um, there's a couple of war scratches on this guy because in this is the newest rifle in my collection, but I have fired about 6,500 rounds through it in that short period of time. Okay, um, It has not given me any issues whatsoever on reliability. It has taken a hit and kept going. And the build quality speaks for itself because the stocks that lots of people were complaining about, being rickety and stuff like that, these stocks move no more than a Magpul CTR. So if you're comfortable with a collapsible stock uh, like the CTR, you're comfortable with the SCARS factory stock, so don't worry about it. Okay, this gun is surprisingly simple. I mean, it looks scary and it looks kind of like a boat, but the rifle is surprisingly simple because I'm gonna field strip this real quick, okay. There you go. You have a field strip gun. If you want to take your bolt out, all you would have to do is push out this pin. Your bolt comes out. Your firing pin comes out. Actually, you push out this pin and your firing pin comes out. And then you remove this uh, retaining pin that's holding your bolt into place. And then your bolt will come out. It's a piece of cake, guys. Okay. The rifle is staggeringly simple. And it's also worth noting as well as it's simple in its simplicity that when you're reassembling the rifle you have to remove 
I'm sorry, when you're disassembling the rifle, you have to remove the charging handle. Okay, and I'm going to get this closer so that you can see it. Now, this charging handle, you can see that there is a recess for it right here. If you flip this over to the other side, you can see that that recess is still there. You can take your charging handle and place it on the other side, which means that you can run it either on the left or the right hand side based on your personal preference. Okay, So, like I said, staggeringly simple and very, very easy to use. Now my rifle is assembled and loaded again, I can continue to review. Now, uh, a, a criticism that I do have, although that this is actually evolving in the marketplace, especially the aftermarket marketplace, is that uh, accessories and spare parts for this guy are actually fairly limited. Um, it is a fairly new rifle still, and it is catching on slowly as people are starting to figure out that this rifle is freaking awesome and, in my mind, absolutely worth the money. Um, but the accessories and spare parts market for it is pretty uh, scarce. So, I mean, honestly, that's only going to mend itself as time goes on and as people start to rely on it more and more. And I would think that accessories and spare parts will start becoming more, like, just a bound for it when a police agency or two or three or twelve decides that they want to adopt this rifle to, to replace their ARs or their shotguns in some cases. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Another criticism that I do have is that although the rifle is of very fine quality, uh, the price is kind of high. Um, I know I bought this for about $2,200. Uh, that was with a pretty serious military discount. Um, I've seen in the same shop this go for $2,600. I've seen them higher than that. So honestly, the rifle to me does not warrant the extra, extra expense. But in a lot of ways, they get to name their price, really, because they're handing you an outstanding rifle. This is, this is basically like an HK416 or a Barrett Rex 7 as far as dependability and just outstanding performance and smoothness of shooting and all of that good stuff. Okay, so uh, price is, is relative to what you're willing to spend. Okay, um, so I, I just hope that this thing gets more of a much needed good track record because it is actually currently serving within U.S. Special Forces. Now we're going to get into some certain things that I uh, that I do like and dislike about it. We're going to start with the dislikes first because there are a lot more things that I like about it. The first thing that I dislike about this is that rear sight, although very functional and very useful, is very easy to sweep out of the way. You can see that I can just dust it like so. And if you're running around and you need your irons for some reason and then you sling up your rifle and you start running somewhere and suddenly it's like that you have to push it back in order to use it I would find that extraordinarily annoying okay the next thing that I actually do not like about this uh, specific system is that if you're going for a fully ambidextrous system okay I do understand why they didn't make a uh, an ambi charging handle meaning it's on both sides because that would actually get that would actually get in the way in some cases because the charging handle does reciprocate with the rifle but I would have liked to see a ambidextrous bolt release because you have magazine release and uh, safety but you don't have bolt release I would have liked to see something similar to uh, the Knight's Armament uh, AR-15 where there's a bolt on, where there's a bolt release button on the other side to make it easier on the shooter because even if you're right-handed or left-handed, if you get into complicated shooting positions, you will have to change over. So having uniform controls would have just been a bigger plus in my mind. Okay, the next thing that I didn't like too much is the sling mounting hardware. The sling mounting hardware in my mind it was not that good. Um, you can see that there are a couple uh, spots for it here. You can see that there are a couple of spots for it here. 
there's one on the other side. I put a key ring on this so that I can run a one point sling effectively. Okay, um, and there's also some up here. And while they do work fairly well, uh, they don't offer much movement whatsoever. And because I'm a one point sling guy, I need some movement for my sling mounting hardware for it to work well. Okay, um, and also, the next thing that I uh, actually dislike quite a bit is uh, while the stock is folding and you can shoot with it while it's folded, this, uh, this stock latch uh, is annoying because it is made out of polymer. I can just see that shearing off real easy. Um, as well as the fact that having a folded stock in a vehicle is a really good idea just because overall length is reduced okay and because military operations with vehicles mean that those vehicles are packed super tight it is an out it, it's a great idea to fold the stock but make sure that the latch is solid make it aluminum or better yet steel or something okay um i, I don't understand why they couldn't have just done that outright i believe that with later generations of the rifle they'll start to fix those problems but as of right now that's a giant pain in the ass okay um, now <clears throat> you guys can see that there's a monolithic rail up here that's good the uh, adjustable gas system it is a short stroke gas piston system so I need to be able to switch between suppressed and unsuppressed fire that's good because there's only two modes I don't have to sit there and dick around with it to get the right mode I need it's either on or off so that's good for me um, these hand guards are awesome Okay, while some complain that they're a little short, for me personally, I just back off the stock a little more and uh, it runs just fine for me. My extension is perfect. But the really big plus about these hand guards is that they are great heat shields. Okay, um, I've done meltdown drills where you send freaking six magazines down range as fast as possible change it out bang 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 change it out bang 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 and the hand guards were actually comfortable to hold okay if I tried that on a gas piston AR or an AK I would have melted my goddamn hand off okay so outstanding heat shields especially for being free floated okay <coughs> the what I'm mainly impressed with is how smooth the system is okay your the bolt and, and uh, op rod that you saw me pull out like the guts of the rifle are very heavy and that works in concert with the PWS brake on the front here and it just it just means for a very smooth shooting rifle in that my aim point actually stays on target if I'm trying to shoot at a 10 inch plate at 50 yards that's fucking awesome okay just being able to shoot faster is a big plus if you have a really smooth shooting system okay so that's pretty much uh, the, the rundown on the rifle I really hope that you guys enjoyed the revision to uh, both of these so let me know what you think like favorite and subscribe and remember a regular guy's firearm is the last defense against tyranny be safe and keep shooting guys Defend your homestead.